Good afternoon and welcome to the San Jose State uh, weekly news conference for San Jose State football. Today is Monday, the October the 15th. This Saturday, San Jose State is on the road for the first time in the month of October, taking on the San Diego State Aztecs in a 7.30 game at San Diego County Credit Union Stadium. Game time is 7.30. Uh, telecast will be by the CBS Sports Network. Radio coverage with Justin Allegri and Kevin Richardson on KLIV 1590 AM starting at 7 o'clock with the pregame show. And now it's time to uh, welcome San Jose State's football coach, Brent Brennan. Thank you, the legendary Lawrence fan. Um, all right, uh, obviously last weekend was tough. I felt coming out of the uh, you know Hawaii and Colorado State games, I felt like we were playing better football. I was really excited about um, kind of our progress and um, we had a great week of practice and I think Saturday was a step back. I think it's hard because um, you know, the, the fumbles that we had in that second half, you know, when you turn the ball over on four consecutive possessions, um, it's really going to flip the game fast, and it did, which was really unfortunate. Um, you know, the, you know any time if, if we were to lose a turnover battle in a game four to zero, I would expect us to lose the game, you know, and, and we did that in 10 plays, 10 scrimmage plays, four fumbles. So um, all of a sudden, it didn't look anything like what we want to look like. And uh, I felt bad for our players. I felt bad for our fans and the people that came out to root us on at Levi. Um, being at Levi was a great experience, I think, for our team, for our fans. Um, and so that was uh, really disappointing. Um, we got a lot of football left to play. We got six games left. We are uh, halfway through our season. We're not where we want to be. But, um, you know, the good news is, is that we've got six games left and we have a chance to uh, play a great opponent this weekend uh, on the road in San Diego State. And so every opportunity is important for us to continue our process and to grow and improve. And uh, we had a great meeting and practice yesterday with our team. And uh, we're excited to get going. But uh, Coach Long is built in San Diego, is obviously pretty well established, a plug and play type system. Uh, literally, uh, even what Coach Monken has done for Army, uh, even what Coach Rolovich has done. Where would you think, on or off the field, where this program is at and what it needs, um, on or off the field, the sort of the components and things like that? You know, I, I think we're making real progress. And uh, I talked to Coach Monken about that before the game. And he was really complimentary. He's like, you guys are playing your tails off. Keep going. He says, it reminds me of our first and second year at Army. Um, he's like, it looks so similar. You're right there in those games, and you're not able to finish them. He's like, it's exactly what we went through. And then he echoed the same thing at the end of the game. Um, obviously, I talked to Coach Rolovich a lot. I talked to him yesterday. Uh, we, you know, We talk about the process and, and the teams and building the program. They lost a tough game at BYU on Saturday night. and so. We've talked about our game and their game and, and uh, kind of what we're both going through. He's in his third year. Um, the thing at San Diego State is really impressive. Um, you know, I think they had had, I think before Brady Hoke had that first winning season in 2010, and then he left and uh, Rocky took over then. And um, since, since then, they've been to a bowl game every year. And, um, you know, they've, they've done a really nice job building that program and, and I think it's a great model for us because it's another CSU has a similar footprint uh, being in a big city like we are um, you know in, in the state of California um, the same challenges you know we, that, that we face kind of similar challenges that they do in terms of our um, our student body and our fan base and and uh, and so it's Rocky's been a good guy for me to talk to from time to time um, he's a fantastic football coach obviously but um Watching what they've built there is really impressive. And, you know, I, I actually took a job there in 2004. I was there for a month. And, um, and they, had, they were in the process of completing the facility upgrade. So they had the Hall of Fame, the new coaches' offices, the new track, uh, new locker room. 
um, all that stuff. And, and I think those things have helped them, uh, you know, kind of catapult into where they're at now. Um, it took them, you know, after getting some of that done, I think it took them three or four years to, to really make the move they've made. Um, but if you go back, I think there was, you know, maybe, you know, they had had a lot of seasons that looked similar to our track record um, before that. Um, and I think before 2010, I think there was 12 years of, of, of losing football seasons, you know, no bowl games. So um, to me, I talk about that a lot with our administration. I talk about that a lot with our donors. Um, San Diego State, you know, why wouldn't we want to be like them? That's a long answer, sorry. That's a big question. Coach, last Coach, last week, San Jose State had a great week of practice, but it led to a letdown at Levi's Stadium, which was disappointing to say the least. How will you and the rest of the coaching staff make sure that this week's practice will be even greater? You know, it, that started yesterday. Um, we started at 6 in the morning. Uh, we brought everybody back early. Um, gave us a chance to kind of address the issues um, that we were dealing with during the game and uh, put that game to bed and turn our attention to San Diego State. Um, you know, like the question I just answered, they've been, you know, the top or one of the top programs in our conference for a long time. And so it's a really good opportunity for us to get, get a start on them and, and get ready to go. Um, they present you with lots of different challenges uh, because they have been so good and they're, and they're so well established. But that's exciting. I mean, that's why you play, is to get a chance to go play against good people. So. Uh, we're going to have a great week of practice. I've talked with all our seniors, and, and uh, you know, we had a great team meeting yesterday, and I think that's a great step in the direction of, of getting this thing where we want it to go. Uh, Coach, you just touched on it briefly, but um, after a game like on Saturday, how much do you, uh, you know, focus on that game, uh, you know, obviously watch the film? How much do you, like, uh, try to focus on fixing those mistakes versus, you know, looking ahead to San Diego State, watching their film and stuff? Like, what's the balance? Well, I, I think it's important that you fix, uh, you know, any issues of, uh, you know, kind of, you know, we got a couple of personal fouls that were egregious. Um, and I think you got to address that. You got to address any effort issues or, or any kind of big picture scheme issues. Um, the, not as much scheme issues on the defensive side of the ball, just because you don't face that, um, that challenge very often. So, um, but all the other things that, that we need to address. We, you know, we did that yesterday morning, and it, w it was really good. It was a really good day, really good start to our week. I feel the team's going to respond to the recent injury, well, the debility injury of Kristen Chapman. Now that Chapman is out, do you feel that the offense will capitalize on, you know, not having that, the winningness uh, as a quarterback available? Um. You know, I, I think they present all kinds of challenges. The, you know, when you look at them, they have the incredibly big senior or veteran offensive line. You know, not senior, but they are good. And um, their ability to run the ball has been kind of the staple of their, of their program for a long time. Um, Chase Jasmine, you know, I recruited him out of high school. I remember him, he's a great kid. He's really developed into a really good player. Um, and, but you know, they have, they've always had a great running back. They've always had a great running attack, certainly as long as Rocky's been there. Um, we saw that you know, a year ago. Um, they were fantastic. So um, I think you know, you know, Ryan is, looks like he's playing good football for them. Um, they continue to win games and find ways to win games, which, which I think is a, you know, kind of one of those hallmarks of a, of a really solid program, a really good team. They find ways to win games no matter what. Um, you know, they've beaten Pac-12 teams and, um, you know, they beat Boise on the road. And so um, they, they present all kinds of challenges. And, it, and I think they're, they've developed their program enough to be in a position where it's, it's just next man in, next man up, go do the job. Rich, I know there's not much of a running game, but how would you describe the offensive identity? I, I see Coach McGiven obviously trying a lot of different things, you know, obviously from other teams that are doing, and some of you guys trying to do anything to kickstart the offense. But how would you describe that offensive identity? Well, I think it's tricky, right, because um, you come off of Hawaii where you do a great job moving the ball, multiple big plays, 
you know, 450 yards throwing it, um, you know, and then, you know, Colorado State, there were some really good moments offensively in that game. Um, there's still a big focus for us to try and, you know, get the run game off the ground. And like I mentioned in my press conference the other night, I think getting uh, Tyler Nevins back helps some of that. Um, you know, I also am hoping that the more this offensive line plays together, I hope that that will continue to get, you know, they will gel and, and get, a little, get a little more comfortable playing together. You know, um, those kids are fighting their tails off and, you know, we've got new people coming in and out of there from guys getting injured or, you know, Dino Motes was playing D-line a year ago for us and he's starting at right tackle. So um, that, that group is always a work in progress. I think, um, you know, Coach McGiv and Coach Bernardi are putting good thoughts together. You know, I think we need to be better at sustaining blocks. I think that showed up on Saturday against Army. Um, and then going against a defense like San Diego State, they present a whole different kind of uh, challenge schematically. Right? It's not something you see every day. You know, as different as Army is offensively, I would say San Diego State is almost that different defensively. And so um, we got a lot of work to do to put together a good plan that gives our players a chance to execute. This week you play on the road in the state of California for the first time this year. Recruit well in the state of California. Ty Cottrell, among others, getting to play at home in San Diego. Uh, went there a couple of years ago, was not as big a part of the passing attack. Talk about, or I guess receiving attack. Talk about um, Ty a little bit, getting to play at home, and then what he's meant to this team this year and being able to feature in front of his friends and family. Well, I think, I, you know, the best thing that, that I've seen from Ty is that he's playing his best football in his senior year. And I think he's just done a fantastic job of continuing to work hard and improve and get better and get better. And uh, now he's at this place where he's playing really good football in his senior year for us. And he's finding you know all kinds of ways to impact the game as a receiver, as a returner, everything. Um, you know, he's an awesome kid, Oceanside High, you know, right up the street from the stadium. So it's going to be pretty special for him to go home. But I think all of our Southern California kids are going to feel that way. They're going to feel excited about going back to Southern California and, and playing there. You know, you know, what do they call it now? Qualcomm? Not anymore. It's San Diego Credit Union. Sorry. I remember it as the MRF. You know, like that's how old I am is going to the MRF. But, uh, you know, I, I, I was joking with my wife. I was like, it, it just seems like we only play in venues that host Super Bowls, you know, week in and week out. Coach, the Spartan offensive line has to improve in run blocking and pass protection, obviously, but what does the Spartan defense have to do in order to keep the team intact? Well, I, I think um, coming out of the game, one of the things that was frustrating was uh, late in that game, it seemed like um, we didn't tackle as well as we had um, in previous weeks. And so um, obviously that's a big focus for our staff. Our defensive staff right now is, is talking about that. Um, you know, I think the flip side of that is, you know, just big picture as an offense, you can't turn the ball over four times in 10 plays and you can't give them the ball on, you know, their side of the 50 yard line three times. We, we, we gave it to them on the 25, 25 and then on the 42. And then one of them was a scoop and score. So those are just, um, you know, that's, that's asking too much of your defense to put them in that spot. You know, I thought they bowed up on the first one, did a nice job holding them to a field goal. Um, but um, that's the, you know, we just got to make sure that we're, you know, sure tackling and getting everybody to the football. Um, Coach, in, in other sports, it's a little bigger, but um, the two schools kind of have a rivalry, the NorCal versus SoCal thing. Um, you guys share a lot of the same recruits. You guys recruited a lot of their players, vice versa. I'm sure a lot of the players have uh, – friends on the on San Diego State. I'm wondering if that fires you guys up at all, if that makes it a little um, more meaningful for them than the average game. I think any time you get to go against, you know, friends or people you care about, it adds a little a little spice to the to the experience. You know, I, I think more than anything for our team is that we know we're going against the team that has been number one or two in this conference for the last 10 years, basically, right? They've been the best team, arguably. Um, you know, so I, I think that's a, that's a big part of it, you know, is it, the, you know, the, the opportunity to play against a team that is as good as San Diego State. Um, I'm hopeful that's what get, gets our juices flowing, not that someone's high school teammate plays for them, but I'm sure that adds to it.
if I could ask you to be maybe a, a bit of a psychologist, I, I have a question about motivation. Okay. Uh, I know sometimes words and, and people can get numb to the words. And how do you continue to try and motivate the kids to, to keep going, even obviously your own six, and how right. do you get them to dig in and just look past it? And, and well, I, you know, I think that's the special sauce. You know what I mean? And I think the the biggest thing is that we have to continue to play for each other. And they put in a lot of work, and they've, you know, I think our senior class is really pushing the team the right way. But at the end of the day, any team that's worth a darn, they play for each other, and and they battle their tails off for each other. And so um, that's a big part of our message this week, is you know that that fight for each other. And and I think as we continue to build our culture here, um, and and those relationships and those bonds get stronger, I, I think we'll play better because because of that brotherhood but that that's my biggest message and and it is and it is complicated but we have six games left to play I mean we have you know it's halftime and my dad used to always tell me nothing's less important than the score at halftime you know and uh, this isn't a single game but it is a season and we got to finish this thing and there's still lots of good football that can be played there's so many good things that can happen with this young team guys stepping up new players emerging Right, establishing guys that are in a position battle or a young player trying to establish himself as a really good player. I think there's so many exciting things that are happening that way that there's so much to focus on and, and be excited about going forward. Coach, it's clear that Spartan Nation watched a game that they'd rather forget. And a couple of fans told me that the Spartans should do less fighting and more coaching and practicing of football. So what do you have to say to the fans and the critics in general? What do I have to say to the fans and the critics in general? Um, you know, I think um, they're saying that we're fighting in practice. Is, is that what? what, yeah. what uh, well, that, that's not happening at all, actually. But, um, you know, I, I would say I understand their frustration, right? Um, and I would hope that they would understand mine. But um, we are working really hard to try and get on the right track. And, um, you know, the best thing that I can say is buy a ticket, come to a game, support the kids, take a leap of faith with our program and come support these kids that are working so hard. I think you'd agree that this game's gonna be won and lost in the trenches. Um, San Diego State's obviously got a great defensive line and they've held you know Arizona State to 21, they held Boise to 13. Um, after struggling offensively last week, how can you guys rebound and uh, you know, especially the pass block um, against this great defensive line? How do you guys um, get it together after last week? Oh, that, that's a good question. I, I think um, we got to do a good job of mixing up um, enough looks and different pass protections, and then we have to um, do a good job of getting the ball out of our hand at quarterback. You know, um, I think um, you know, a couple of those things last week were um, they made good play calls in, in, into a protection that, that didn't necessarily handle it very well. Um, and I think you know, doing different things with um, getting our tight ends involved in protection or our running back involved in protection or releasing everybody and making them cover people. I mean, there's, there's multiple things we can do, but, you know, that's what we're hard at work doing is putting together a plan that gives us a chance against a really good front. Their, their defense is fantastic. They run to the ball. They've got good players everywhere. Um, you know, 95 is Noble Hall is a great player. He is a, going to be a real challenge for us to slow down. Um, but they have good players everywhere, and, and I think that's um, that's what you get when you have a program that's that's built up over time, and and you can see the you know kind of the success that they've had, and they've been able to sustain because they've done a great job recruiting and bringing the right kind of kids in their program. Um, <clears throat> watching San Diego, I mean, to me, they seem really old-fashioned, and just they're going to run, and right. and uh, I guess I'm going to ask what where where do you recommend we look at as far as matchups, either individuals or, or uh, well, I think kids we need to look at. I think, like it was just said, I think the, the critical matchups are going to happen in the trenches. Um, I, I, it, you know, football's always won and lost there. Um, you know, you know, I, you could argue that's where it was won and lost for us last week. You know, but I, I really believe it's always that way. And uh, you know, the other key component is that turnover battle, right? Um, we had done a nice job with that so far um, in each of our games before this, but this is the one game where it. You know, it, it went, and I understand people's frustration, our fans' frustration, because it went back to looking like last year, right? F you know, 
four turnovers to none. And, and so that's the thing, that's a big piece of what, what we need to get right for this week. Uh, Coach, one of the uh, focal high points on social media, especially after the Army game, was when, coming back to uh, Troy Crichell, when he and Trey Hartley took a knee during the anthem. Do you feel that, um, was there in, any indication that they were going to do so, especially in a matchup against the Army? And do you feel that they're trying to raise awareness of a bigger issue that is probably not being addressed right now in terms of, like, uh, collegiate football? Was there any? Was Could there you any please new? repeat the question? Oh, sure. Um, was there any indication that Cottrell and Hartley were going to uh, perform that demonstration during the game, or was that kind of a spur of the moment deal? And if so, what do you feel was their motivation for doing so against Army? I'm unaware of the of what you're talking about. We we were in the locker room for the anthem. Thank you. Well, that will uh, do it for this week. A reminder, Saturday night, uh, October the 20th, San Jose State at San Diego State, 7.30 game, television coverage by the CBS Sports Network, radio coverage locally in the San Jose area by KLIV, 1590 AM. We'll see you again soon. Thanks very much.